Hi guys, welcome again to Intellect Medivos, where learning is made easy. I am Dr. Chirag Manan, working as an intensivist at Polo Hospital, New Delhi. So today in this video, I will discuss about non-invasive ventilation, that is NIV, and that too from a BiPAP machine. So this is a BiPAP machine, which we will talk about in this video. So let's get started. Now, as the name says, it is non-invasive ventilation. That means you are not going inside the trachea of a patient. It is a non-invasive. So you give a pressure and the oxygen from a face mask. Right? That is a different NIV mask. I'll show in, at the end of this video. So uh, it is non-invasive, and that too can be given either by a BiPAP machine or from a ventilator. Now, what is this machine? Nowadays, this is very, very, very important. All because we are all working in this pandemic, right? And we don't have enough resources. We don't have enough ventilators. We don't have ICU beds. So we need to manage our patients in the ward, in the emergency, or maybe in the nursing home with the BiPAP machine if they are having acute respiratory illness or distress, right? So coming on to a BiPAP, what is this machine? As the name says, BiPAP is bi-level. PAP stands for positive airway pressure. Now, bi level means there are two levels. So, one level, one is called as IPAP, the other is EPAP. IPAP stands for inspiratory positive airway pressure, whereas EPAP stands for expiratory positive airway pressure. Now, the minimum value of IPAP is 8 centimeters of water, whereas for EPAP it is 4 centimeters of water. The difference between the two, IPAP and EPAP, should be at least 4 cm of water. So that means, you have, if you have to start, if you have to initiate a BiPAP, it should be 8 by 4 cm. That means, IPAP of 8 cm of water, EPAP of 4 cm of water. I will tell you how to start it. But before going on into the details, we need to know when to start and in which patient we need to give a BiPAP support. That means the indication of this machine. Right? So the first indication is acute hypoxic respiratory failure along with acute hypercapnic. So either of the two, maybe the patient is hypoxic or hypercapnic. Then second is acute exacerbation of COPD. Then the third, patients having difficulty in breathing. Fourth, patients after extubation having difficulties. Fifth, Patients of neuromuscular diseases like GBS or myasthenia gravis. Sixth is patients having uh, cardiogenic pulmonary edema or congestive heart failure. And seventh is patient having OSA or OHS, that means obesity hypoventilation syndrome. We can treat the last two indications with the help of CPAP machine. So what is this CPAP? Now another name, I mean previously we were talking about BiPAP, now I am using the word CPAP. So CPAP is nothing if your IPAP is equal to EPAP. If these both are equal, that means that is a CPAP. CPAP stands for Continuous Positive Airway Pressure, having IPAP equal to EPAP. Right? So there is a mode in this CPAP machine. So, uh, so these are the uh, indications of using a BiPAP or an NIV. Now coming on to how to initiate and how to start. So the BiPAP machine which we use is a wristmed machine and that to a Stella. So there are various machines which are available in the market. So I will tell you about this machine, this particular machine. So first of all as this is an electronic machine you need to switch it on. So there is a switch button over here at the back as you can see. So I will switch it on and you can see this machine is started. This is the main screen. As you can see, there is a lock button over here. So this screen is locked. If you want to change any settings, you need to unlock this. To unlock this machine, so you need to press the second button and the main button to unlock. Now it is asking for how many minutes. Let's set it at 5 minutes. So now you can see this is unlocked. We have unlocked the screen or the settings. Now going into the settings of this machine. Over here, the first thing you can see is pathology. The machine is asking the which pathology is it. So if we want to have one is OHS that is obesity hyperventilation syndrome. The other is for a restrictive disease 
or for an obstructive disease. So you can select the pathology according to the patient. The other thing is the mode. Now you need to select the mode according to the patient condition. So the first mode which you can see over here is S. S stands for spontaneous mode. Now the other modes which are available is ST that is spontaneous and time. The third is T that is time and another mode is CPAP as we have already discussed continuous positive airway pressure. Now coming on to the first which is a spontaneous. The at other settings you can see is just the IPAP and a EPAP right. Uh, whereas if we put as ST mode there is another option of a backup rate. Now at, I tell you the difference. Uh, whenever the patient is breathing spontaneously then we put a patient on spontaneous mode. The cycle and the trigger I mean if we talk about a ventilator or a BiPAP we talk about one is the trigger and the other is how it is cycling from a IPAP to I, EPAP or EPAP to IPAP to the next breath. So if the patient is spontaneously breathing you, we put on a spontaneous mode. If there are any apneic episodes then the preferred uh, mode is ST that is spontaneous or time. So in time the trigger as well as the cycling is time triggered or the machine triggered right whereas if the mode is only T that is time that means the patient is not breathing on its own it is only time triggered or machine triggered and machine cycled. So these are the three modes and the other mode which I showed you is CPAP right. So uh, nowadays there is another mode which is commonly used as AM, AVAPS that is Average Volume Assured Pressure Support. I will talk about this AVAPS in another video. So these are the basic things. Now let's come on to the screen. So uh, like this is ST. If you want to change the setting of IPAP, press it and you can increase or decrease. I will tell you when to increase. And now let's say I have set it at 12 centimeters of water and if I want to change the EPAP then press it and then you can increase it. So the setting right now is 12 by 6 and I have set the backup rate as 12. Now when to increase the IPAP and when to increase EPAP. Basically uh, what is a EPAP? EPAP is almost similar to PEEP that is positive and expiratory pressure. That means we are giving a pressure at the end of expiration when your alveoli gets collapsed. So majority EPAP or PEEP is given to open up the collapsed airway or the collapsed alveoli. Uh, whenever there is a problem with oxygenation, I mean if you see the ABG of a patient, you, can, you are seeing a hypoxemia, then you need to increase the EPAP or PEEP. Whereas if your ABG shows increased PCO2, that means you need to wash out, you need to ventilate the patient more. Then in those situations, you increase the IPAP of a patient. Whenever you are attaching a, a, a BiPAP machine to a patient, the first and foremost thing you need to know is to inform the patient. Always inform the patient that you are giving a pressure from, uh, from outside and they need to cooperate with the machine. Right? Uh, then the second is the clinical condition and clinical scenario of the patient. So whether the patient is dyspneic, what is the respiratory rate, how is the breathing pattern and how is the auscultation, right? So examination and clinical condition. The third is ABG. If the ABG shows increase in PCO2, you know now you have to wash out the CO2, you will increase the IPAP of a patient. Whereas if the ABG shows hypoxemia and the PCO2 is in a normal range, you need to know that this is the time you need to increase the EPAP or the PEEP of a patient. But the difference as I already said, the difference between the IPAP and EPAP should be at least 4 cm of water. Start our patients on 8 by 4 support and then we increase in increments of 1 to 2 cm of water. Like starting with the 8 by 4, then we increase it to 9, then 10, 10 by 4 depending on obviously the clinical condition of the patient and the ABG. We repeat the ABG in these kind of scenarios after 1 to 2 hours. So this is how we manage a patient on a BiPAP machine. So now we have learned what are the indications, I mean in which patient you need to use, how to use it, 
Now the important thing is when not to use. We need to know that also. So the contraindication. The first and foremost is patient drowsy or confused or having a low GCS. In these patients, it is contraindication. You don't need to apply a BiPAP until this patient is not cooperative. Second, patient at a risk of aspiration. Third, patient of facial trauma. I mean the trauma over here or patient of burns. Fourth, uh, patient having regurgitation or hematemesis. Fifth, uh, patient of pneumothorax or having a bulla or emphysema. So these are the main contraindications in which we do not apply a NIV or you can say a BiPAP machine. Uh, so these are the things which you need to know before applying a BiPAP to a patient. So I hope I have cleared all the basic things about a BiPAP and if you have any doubt you can leave a comment and if you like the content of this video please hit the like button and share with your friends and colleagues who are actually working in COVID area who needs this, who need, who need to know about this BiPAP machine and please subscribe to the channel for the latest updates of my videos. Thank you so much guys. Take care.